picture of you guys with the biggest artist in the world, Drake, hits the internet. What was it like meeting Drake? Like, how did that all think, you know, that all happen? It was a good time meeting Drake. It was a, you know, great time. Feel me? You know, chilling. Met other people, you know. You met other people? Who else you guys meet? I just, you know, I was just there. I was playing, was playing. Me and my son Didi was just talking to my son. And we really somebody, like, feel me? Mm -hmm. Used to meet, like, I told my son Didi, like, yo, we really, me and the people we used to fucking listen to. Yeah. My son Didi was like, yeah, fact, bro. And I was like, yeah, in my heart, that shit, we about to go up. Mm -hmm. This is the beginning. And he was like, nah. That's when we was in Miami, matter of fact. We was in Miami. Mm -hmm. When we first got to Miami, <clears throat> we was in Miami. He was like, nah, we in Miami. <laughs> Yo, 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 it's your boy Hakeem, and you are watching Our Generation Music. And man, I got something very special, special for y'all, man. My man's doing his thing right now, Sugar Hill D Dot. What's up, man? What's the word, bro? How are you, man? Chilling, bro. So, you know, the, one of the first things I noticed when I walked into the studio was just like, you going to an engineer and you were like immediately like, yo, pull this beat up. I think you were listening to it earlier. Were you doing some type of writing to it or anything like that? No. When I go through this dude, I just already got my shit ran because I'll be writing in the crib or not. I just, like, if I don't got it all done, I just keep, keep, like, writing shit and that's what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Like, I had half of it rolling already because I wrote it in my crib and then, feel me, now I wrote it here, so. Yeah. My song is done. It's interesting to see that because like a lot of the newer artists, everyone, although like you were punching in later, like they don't even write at all. They don't even do no pre-writing. It's just straight to the studio like, yo, I'm just gonna punch in the whole time. Nah, I don't do that, bro. I need to, I need to make sure my song mm -hmm. good. Feel me? Yeah. Nah, I love that because it's like, You'll have like you'll hear a song and it'll like it'll just make no sense going into the hook or just like you'll hear a verse and it'll be all over the place when the hook was like, yeah, this da 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 and you're just like, bruh, this song don't even make sense. Where did you um you know learn how to like write or even just construct a record? I ain't gonna lie. Just just writing. Mm -hmm. It was just right. And I have a flow already, so you know? Yeah. My flow is my flow, and then you write. Do you write, and you got a flow, and you combine them two things. Mm -hmm. You can make. You could go to the studio and make a track. Yeah. Do you remember like um, the first <coughs> like song that you ever? You're like you're 15 or 14, right? So how long have you like been making music and stuff now for? Like a year and a half. Jesus Christ, a year and a half, and this shit's moving like this already. Thank God for all his blessings. For real, for real. Damn, what, when did you realize like, oh shit, like that moment, like, oh, this shit's going crazy. Like, what was it a particular- When I had my first show, when my son Ira and Didi, when my mm -hmm. son Ira brought me out, my son Ira brought me out to rest his soul. I miss my son. My son Ira brought me and all the homies out to do a show. And when I saw, when I came out, they was going crazy, that's when I realized. You feel me? Um, somebody. Yeah. Nah, that's crazy. And you know, the videos from that, that show looks insane too, man. And you know, you just said E Dot, you know, he passed and everything, and you know, he just said you miss him a lot. Um, how has you know the passing of E Dot and Naughty like changed the way you look at life right now? Just gotta keep doing this for them. Gotta keep going up for them. Mm -hmm. Gotta keep, you know, pushing. And I gotta keep, can't let them down. So I gotta keep motivating my fans. I gotta keep dropping music. I gotta just do it for them. Cause mm -hmm. I know they wouldn't want me to stop what I'm doing. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Do you remember like the, maybe like the last conversation you had 
with EDOT or anything? Was what you know? Was it just like super like a casual day or whatever? Last time I talked to my son, Dad, it was on the phone. Mm -hmm. Talked to my son, Dad, on the phone. Talked to him about shit, regular shit. Be on the phone with my son for hours. For hours. It's just sad, man. Like when I was growing up too, I lost like a whole bunch of homies and shit. Like. It was crazy, it was like weird, you know? It was just like a really weird time because it's just like, you're all like playing one day and just being kids and then boom, somebody dies and your like, whole world is just like, yo, what the fuck? Like, you know what I mean? I can't even call the homie no more. Just the world we live in. Yeah. Another thing too is um, you, picture of you guys with the biggest artist in the world, Drake, hits the internet. What was it like meeting Drake? Like, how did that all think, you know, that all happen? It was a good time meeting Drake. It was a, you know, great time, feel me? You know, chilling, met other people, you know. You met other people, who else you guys meet? Nah, I just, you know, I was just there. I was playing, just playing. Me and my son Didi was just talking to my son. And we really somebody, like, Feel me? Mm -hmm. he used to meet, like, I told my son Didi, like, yo, we really, me and the people we used to fucking listen to. Yeah. My son Didi was like, yeah, fact, bro. And I was like, yeah, my heart, that shit, we about to go up, mm -hmm. like, this the beginning. And he was like, nah. Not when we was in Miami, matter of fact. We was in Miami. Mm -hmm. When we first got to Miami, <clears throat> we was in Miami. He was like, nah, we in Miami. <laughs> oh God, Miami will do that to you. But even like, you know, I'm sure that was that your first time like really yeah, traveling? Yeah, my first time in Miami. Yeah, that's a crazy first trip. Go to Miami, meeting Drake, the whole world seeing it. Like, you know, that's some shit right there. What else did you guys do while you guys were down there? Did you guys get to play Drake any music or anything like that? Of course, Drake. Drake music always played in Miami. Drake music. No, like, everywhere. did you guys get to play him any of your music, like your Unleashed it or anything? No, like no, nah, nah, not really. But, but in Miami, I went to. We went. We was in the studios working. Mm -hmm. You know, doing stuff. In Miami, and just can, fun shit. That's fire. And then, you know, after all that happens, you know, you guys now battling for the the Nautica Drake collab. Um, it's all three of you guys. You guys shot that in New York? Mm -hmm. What was that like, you know, getting the call that you guys were going to do that and just like the whole day of, you know, getting that together? I ain't gonna lie, that day was low key fun to me. What, why was it fun? But it was mad cold that day, I ain't gonna lie. It was super brick. They had us wearing, but it was cold. But mm -hmm. I ain't gonna lie, I ain't. That shit looks fire on me. Just saying, that purple suit. Yeah. Look fire on me. Yeah, nah, that was that was crazy because I know it was just like, you know, I'm sure when everybody in your hood or like your family seen that, they were like, yo, what the fuck? Like, y'all niggas really going crazy. Like, this is like. A <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> nah, my my family was like for me. Mm-hmm. You no. Know? Good. Good shit happening. That's why I thank God for all the blessings. Feel me? Yeah. So creatively, you know, seeing you in the booth and everything, you know, you got a lot of anger and you hear it in the music and you're constantly trying to get it out uh, while you're recording and while you're in the song, you know, while you're making the song and everything, like what really like drives that? Like, where do you get all that from, you know? I just get in the booth and start bugging. <laughs> start, start making hits. All my songs, I was just, just get in the booth and just start. Start making music. Do you just like hold in all that aggression from like your day and just come to the studio and get it all out? I just go to the stool like like sometimes sometimes you gotta go to the stool mm -hmm. just cause you gotta hit. Sometimes you gotta go to the stool to like wrap your pain away. Feel me? Yeah. So but I wouldn't really say what I do, go to the stool and scream. That's not really like letting my anger out, I was just me rapping. Yeah. Like when I'm, feel me when I make like a 
love song or like some singing shit, mm -hmm. that's when I like say my pain and shit. But when it's some drill shit, I don't even like I just rap. Yeah, it's funny too because you were just like, I wish like my voice because the song that you were recording was super fire. You're like, I wish my voice could because you finally like, got halfway through it and your voice like changed, which is why your voice is like a little bit fucked up right now. But it was just like, man, I wish I could have my voice at like that three o'clock in the morning, like every day type shit. Nah, it was a song I made in Miami, and it's called 3 a.m. in the Mhm. Mm and my voice sounded perfect on that shit. And I was like, damn, I wish my voice could sound like 3 a.m. in the Yams right now. But fuck it, my shit still sound fire. I made mm -hmm. it. Damn, that's crazy. Do you, damn, maybe there's a way you can find a way to replicate that or some shit like. What do you feel like got your voice to that point just from being out or just like talking? Nah, about Miami, it? I was just vibing like, mm -hmm. like I was just singing a song, just singing. Yeah. For me. Maybe like, Miami's like, cause you know, some people like we're recording music. It's like certain places, different things come out cause of the vibes and just like the excitement of being there. Maybe, you know, Lil Wayne, when he was young, he went to Miami for like some, I think it was a show or just like a session or something. He didn't leave. He just was like, yo, I love Miami. You know what I mean? So it's like, maybe that's it. Maybe Miami's like the spot for you to go record and get in your bag like that. Probably. Gotta try to go and find that out. Yeah. You should definitely go try that out, man. Um, no. What were you listening to growing up then? Um, growing up, listening to so, like old, old rappers, like an old rapper, Tupac, like a rapper. Like when I was younger, Chris Brown. Okay. Like a show that inspired me to rap, Empire. So. That's like the second time I've heard Empire with like these, the younger, like, uh, what's the name? BBG Stepper just said that, yo, like he was watching Empire and shit and that inspired him to make music. That's crazy that that show like paid like such a pivotal role in like all you guys wanting to make music and shit. Well, I really love that show. I you don't did? know about nobody else but me. That shit made me to make music. Like, singing shit, rapping shit, real shit. Were you watching that shit like every time it came on type shit? Yeah, every Wednesday. Damn, that's crazy. It's crazy because it's like, damn, that show was really like really running shit for like a hot minute. Yeah, like, long, like, long. Like a real long time. That shit had like so proper grasp on the black fucking community, man. I think Terrence Howard is a funny nigga, bro. <laughs> That is one funny nigga right there. Um, okay, so you, Didi Osama, you know, you guys have this like friendly competition, you know, going on everything when you guys are making music. Like, what's the studio vibe like with you two? Huh? Like, you know, just y'all obviously be pushing each other, right? Like. Nah, I don't know what you're talking about. No? Like, um, we don't be in competition. No, like a friendly competition. Like, you know, like in your studio, like, nah, I'm about to write the better verse or something like, nothing like that? Nah, why would I say I want to write a better verse than Didi? Why would I say that? Oh, okay. That's my brother, I would, nah, I would not say that. You guys don't push each other to like? No, we just go up together. Okay. There's no competition. I love that, I love that, man. Um, I love that. Yeah, it's usually like um, with like groups and like, you know, just people coming up. It's just like always like the homies and shit like, nah, like I remember like you'll hear so and so like someone will redo their verse because they hear certain shit like, oh, nah, I got it. This thing kind of like killed my shit. Like, let me go back in there and go do this or that. What do you feel like the future of like drill music is going to be? Like, you feel like it's still going to be stuck on like on the samples and this and that? Or it's like you feel like it's going to grow somewhere else? Are you even trying to like push like drill or anything like that? It's like a whole different direction? Man, whatever my fans love for whatever I'm gonna keep making. Mm -hmm. That's just how I feel. And then I gotta switch it up sometimes too. See what my fans like that. So my fans think that my music I'm making now is good. And if I show them something else and they like that, you know? Yeah. What are some like, has there ever been like a beat pack that someone sent you that was completely like not some drill shit that you was really fucking with it? I mean, no, no, 
everybody. Like, my son Lucas, mm -hmm. fuck with my son Lucas. My son Lucas be sending me beats, love, and drill. Like, not love, like melodic. Mm -hmm. Melodic and drill, he be sending me. So what are you like, what are you looking for in like a drill beat that makes you want to get on it? Mm -hmm. What are you looking for in like a drill beat that makes you want to rap on it? Because I'm sure you're very particular with all the shit that you get on. The drill beat that I want to rap on? Yeah, like what do you look for in the beat? Whatever is fire. This fire, it's not like the 808s or like the, the hi-hats or the sample, like... No, whatever, whatever I feel like is good on whatever I feel like it's good, then I like, I don't feel like, nah, this shit trash. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's a good beat. And then, you know, I mean, I'm gonna use that. Yeah. Nah, my favorite thing, like, with the drill shit is just, like, how these crazy, like, samples that no one ever is like, oh, don't use that, don't do that. And then you guys just came, all you guys were like, nah, fuck that shit. We're gonna rap on all these classic drill beats. These samples, like, we don't give a fuck. And this shit is hard as fuck. Man. All my hits, some of my hits is, you know, I had to learn to stop using samples. Why, because they're clearance? Nah, because, you know, just certain shit to happen in this industry shit. Mm -hmm. uh, along the way, along, like, I'd rather just have people send me beats. Yeah, I feel that. And, you know, another probably was like a super dope moment for you, I think, was when, um, in the Real Talk video, Bobby Smurder like gave y'all your props, like y'all the youngest niggas running shit. Cause at one point they was like their youngest niggas running shit in New York. Like what was that moment? Like, do you remember when Bobby and them was like at the, at the top of their shit? Yeah, I used to listen to Hot Boy. And I used to listen to, what's that shit called again? Uh, that shit with him and Roddy Rebel? Computers. Yeah, that shit. I used to listen to that shit. That's crazy, man. Bro, when them niggas first came out and hit the streets, bro, you could not hear hot nigga. It was everywhere. Everywhere. Like, that shit was literally fucking everywhere. And another person, even before, like, we started this, you were talking about, which I was like, damn, you know about Joel Santana? I didn't, like, you really listen to Joel's and shit like that? Nah, yeah, I know my son does. Okay. Oh, like, you actually know him? Oh, how did you meet Joel's and everything? Um,. My son, Duty Low. Okay. My son, um, Duty Low introduced me to L's. Feel me? Mm hmm And then, ever since that, I've been close to L's. And then I was with Duty. Duty introduced me to L's. And then my son, L's, ever since that, my son just fuck with me. That's crazy, because that's really like a fucking New York legend. Like, real talk, like, bro, like, back in the day, just Dipset and just even the songs with him and Wayne, like Rewind and shit like that. Like him and Wayne used to go so crazy together. I don't know if you heard or remember all those songs. Man, I know he made songs with Lil Wayne. When I be in the crib with my son Alice, all my son do is try to motivate me to, you know, mm -hmm. that's all, to do more music and shit. That's all my son try to motivate me to do. Yeah. Um, just like, you know, you've been putting out, too, a whole bunch of singles, right? And, you know, they're all super hard and fire, but is there thoughts for you to, like, put out a project? Like, are you gonna, are you working towards that right now? What's that, what's the process been like, you know, cutting these records and getting these records down to make something? I'm gonna do an EP. You wanna do an EP? How many songs do you think you already got, like, ready for that? Couple. Couple. Nope. Got a couple already. Mm -hmm. So, feel me? A couple songs. My fans will love it. Yeah. What this EP, like, what do you feel like you want to accomplish? Because right now, like, you're steadily moving. You're, you know, you're bubbling. You guys are like the new face of New York. Y'all, the new young niggas going crazy. Like, what would make you happy, like, the outcome of this EP? Shit, my streams will go up. Okay. Cause you about to what, like a, at a hundred, hundred thousand monthly listeners right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. More? More. Yeah, I got a million streams, bro. Oh, you got a million streams, but like on your Spotify, is it a million, you have a million monthly listeners? Now you have a, now you have like, you have a hundred, you have 93,000 like monthly, but in the back end, which that's what actually does matter is your 
back in, like your daily streams. Mm -hmm. Your monthly listeners mean nothing to niggas out there. It's, it's fucking pennies. It's just a front there. It's like what you stream daily. Is but really I got crazy. millions. I got a couple million streams. Yeah. What did couple. that feel? Yeah. Even the videos, the videos go crazy. Well, what did that feel like, you know, getting a, like your first million stream? Feel me? Shit crazy. I got fans that really like my music. Mm hmm Feel me? So, just gotta keep doing it for my son, Nadi and Ida. That's yeah. all. It's crazy, man. Um, R.I.P. Those, those two young bros, man. They, they were going crazy, too, doing their thing. Um, Fan-wise, you said, you know, you got to go crazy for fans and, you know, keep, keep um, applying the pressure and giving them music, but like, I, you know, obviously we've seen the heights of Drake, someone like Drake, like fucking with your music, but was there anybody else that like hit you up? Was like, you saw listening to your music that blew you away or anything like that? I mean, I mean, yeah, I guess. Oh, check who followed me, bro. Anyone I crazy followed you? Yeah, just check for yourself. Okay. Um, Sugar Hill wise, um, what was it like, you know, growing up there and everything? Growing up on block is just growing up on any nigga, just if he grew up in any hood. Yeah. If you're young, if you're young growing up on a block, you should understand, mm -hmm. you know? You need to get bread, you need to feel me when you go outside. Need to have some money on you. I feel me. Yeah. Shit that go on in the hood. You were on the block early, young. Like yeah, I guess you could say that. Been on the block. I mean, you're 14 now, so like, what age were you on the block? Cause that's fucking young too. <laughs> yeah, I was on the block young, bro. Bro, I was on the block young. What? What? Like, what made you want to hustle? Like, what? What was going on in your life that made you want to hit the streets so young? young? I ain't want to hit the streets. It's just... Or have to. Yeah, like niggas go through shit. And niggas go through shit at home. And then the streets is just like... Somewhere they don't got to deal with it. Mm -hmm. If you know. Like niggas that go through shit at their crib. Family was that when you go on the streets, you probably go through shit street wise. Mm -hmm. So you gotta handle what you gotta do, you gotta handle what's gotta be handled. Yeah, yeah, for real. For real. I feel like I'm guessing, like, growing up in Sugar Hill, uh, Sugar Hill made you grow up super fast. I guess you could say that. Yeah. Did you ever, are you in school currently right now? Or did you, when was the last time you went to school? Yeah, I'm in school, but I'm not in school. Like, I'm not going to school publicly. I'm going to school through, you know? Are you doing like online school right now? No, I'm going to school, yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah. Okay, bet. What's it like, um, do like, obviously, you know, you're blowing up and people you grow up with that are regular, are in school, like, what's that, engage, you know, interaction like? Because they're looking at you, like you said, you're somebody now, you know? Does that trip you out or like, is this, you know, it doesn't bother you at all? Like, they're probably like, ah, oh, probably always trying to film you or some shit like that. It don't bother me. It don't really bother me that people I know want to take videos of me. It's just regular. Mm -hmm. oh. People that I know. Yeah. What about like the people that you don't know and shit? How are you adjusting to like the fame and shit? People don't see me unless they see me at my shows. Oh, okay. So you just from sh you just at the home shows and studio. That's what every day is like for you. I guess you could say that. Yeah. I guess. But that's good that. though because that means you're just all work, really. You know, you're probably gonna spend. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> But I guess you could say that. I guess you could say that. I mean, but that's good though, because that means, you know, it's gonna be all work. Like, you know, some of the best artists, literally, they live in the fucking studio. Like, they got a bed at the studio. They don't even leave that shit. It's their fucking house. You know what I mean? 
But um, yeah, we usually uh, do this to close it out and everything. What is your message for our generation? I mean, for this generation, whatever you got going on, don't let that shit depress you. Don't let that shit bring you down. And no, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And whatever, whoever telling you that you can't do it, don't listen to them. Cause you gotta keep following your dream to to um, accomplish your dream. You understand? Mm -hmm. Feel me? So you gotta keep going until you make it. And if you don't make it, you just gotta keep going. Cause no matter what, you're gonna make it. If you have that energy saying that you're gonna make it, you're gonna make it. My boy, I appreciate you. Thank you, bro.